Hello friends, um, today I'm going to do another video for you in the acrylics. <clears throat> it's going to be a Florida landscape. Now I did one, I did this painting already before, but, um, and I was filming it, but somehow I got distracted and uh, never got to finish the painting in full for you. I never got to finish the video. So I'm going to redo the painting, change up maybe just a little bit. So at least you can see the process on how it was done and then I can show you the instructions on uh, if you want to try it out yourself, you might as well. So it's going to be a Florida landscape, it's going to be a Florida Everglades. And um, right now I toned the, uh, it's not my canvas, but it's a wood panel, cradled wood panel. As you can see, this is an 8 by 10. I toned the panel so I could have a nice little uh, underglow for this painting. So the colors that I have is cad yellow medium, alizarin crimson, cerulean blue, which I, I'm not sure if I'm going to use or not, but anyway, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, raw sienna, and white. I may add some colors and just some colors maybe I might not use, but it's just in case. So I'm going to use my largest brush first. This is a number uh, 12. Okay. It's a pro white, pro white from Jerry's Artorama. So here we go. <clears throat> First, let's start off with the sky. And the sky, I'm going to use ultramarine blue, a little bit of raw sienna. And the reason why I'm using this raw sienna is to take down a little bit of the blue. Maybe I might even use a little bit of crimson in this. Okay, that might work. Now remember, this is just going to be my base color for this painting. I might go over it again. I usually do on a lot of my paintings, go back over the color with a different color that uh, pleases me a little bit more. Or I feel like I should add to it. So right now, as you can see, the paint is really thin. I'm not too worried about what it looks like and you will see why I'm just plopping it on now this is going to dry pretty quick so now let's get to the water For the landscape we're going to use uh, burnt umber alizarin crimson and a little bit of ultramarine blue Almost like an equal mix. Yeah. All right. I just plop it on. Just plop on the paint. And I'll vary the mixture a little bit by maybe dipping an alizarin crimson and add a little bit of yellow to this. Give it like that orange tone or even, I might even add a little bit of, um, raw sienna I don't know if you can see this very well raw sienna and I know this looks pretty transparent uh, and that's a good thing I want this to be a bit transparent And the reason why is that you could get some cool effects with uh, transparent colors. All right, I gotta let this dry a little bit. Whenever you see paint lifting off, uh, just give it a break, give it a rest. Not even listening to my own advice. Ha 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 ha. Here we go. Alright, we're gonna let that be for a minute. So for the sky, I'm gonna use for the clouds, I should I say. Is the lizard crimson, raw sienna, and a little bit 
of ultramarine blue. And it's going to create kind of a glaze. I know this kind of looks crazy, but I promise you it's not. I'm gonna vary the sky a little bit from the original painting just so that it's not all the same. And you see some of the background colors coming through some of these spots. Totally cool, that's fine. And believe it or not, this looks like uh, there will be like highlights going over this. Although this color looks a little bit clear, uh, see-through, there are highlights coming through. Okay. Okay. Now the paint is actually a little bit thicker. Yes, as you can see, I'm using pretty thick uh, layer here. Now the, the first color that I, I plopped down that was just like a base to show through the paint through the cloud colors now I'm going to go to a smaller brush this is a number four flat We're still gonna work on a sky here a bit. So now, when I did the sky here, I use uh, Elizabeth Crimson and a little bit of um, raw sienna to tone down the color and a little bit of um, Elizabeth, uh, not Elizabeth Crimson. I used raw sienna, Elizabeth Crimson, a little bit of ultramarine blue to tone down this color. So now I'm gonna be using a little bit less of the raw sienna, a little bit less of the ultramarine blue and give it more alizarin crimson to this give it more chroma meaning the color is going to pop out a little bit more versus the rest of this red and you'll see what i'm talking about here i hope i'm not confusing you guys basically all i'm saying is that i um i'm not going to tone down the color as much I'm going to create a transition color, a little bit more pink. Now I'm working a little bit quick here because 
uh, I don't want the paint to set up too quickly. Let's work on this a little bit more. Darken this base. Again, I'm using ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt umber, lizard crimson. I'm using thicker paints. And you'll see the importance of why I'm making this base a little bit darker. I'm leaving some of this highlight here because uh, some of them I'm just it's just going to cause a, a visual texture is why I'm leaving this somewhat a little bit transparent some of these colors because I'm going to go over light with lighter colors but I want some of this to show through at the same time so creating an effect of grass you know it's just it's all about visual texture really it's what it is you don't have to make everything uniform here bring some of this down a little bit I'm gonna put a little glaze of color of the grass here so if the blades of grass are going this way the sh the shadow or the reflection are going to go the opposite way and i'm doing this shadow i'm doing a shadow fairly thin then i'm just quickly going over it over it giving that wisp that wisp look now let's bring the reflection of these clouds a little bit into the water and then finish off the base while this dries uh, I'm, do, I'm gonna do the water while this dries a little bit and then uh, we'll work on the grass I'm gonna give this a chance to dry so a lizard crimson a little bit of raw sienna a little bit of white a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue there you go if this color is light, the reflection is going to be dark. If the reflection is light, then the subject that's reflecting off the water is going to be dark. So vice versa. If this is light, this is going to be dark. If this is light, this side will be dark. Just a rule of thumb. Did you notice like I am not like too concerned, at least not at this point, with um, exactness, details, or what have you. Just putting down the colors, just, you know, put them down quickly as you feel them. You know, you gotta capture the moment. It's just like painting plein air. Just catch the essence of the painting. That's all you got to do here. Like I said, I changed this up from the original a little bit. And I will post the original. Well, I did post the original painting. But uh, so you'll see a little bit of a difference. So now we've done the clouds a little bit. Let me see. Maybe a little bit more on this bad boy here. And you see that I'm doing it fairly thin. You can't do that with oil. You'd have to let the layers dry before I can even do such a thin layer like that. Basically, this is what I'm doing is glazing. And if this was oils, I would not be able to glaze right away like that. I'd have to wait either tomorrow or when the painting set, sets up completely. So, but with acrylics, you can. The beauty of it. So sometimes I like painting with oils depending on the kind of effects that I want. And sometimes just... I want to get this painting out of my mind, just do it quickly. I'll do it in acrylics. It's amazing. I mean, everybody likes to paint oil, but I think if you give acrylics a chance and just try and master acrylics, I think people would enjoy acrylics a little bit more. 
give a little bit of ultramarine blue to this, maybe a little bit more burnt umber. You see, I'm like right here, I'm letting some hints of the colors show through. Just let some, and then just wisp. I'm gonna wisp right through some of the work that I just did. And it's kind of dry brush effect that I'm doing here. And what that's gonna do is create these like ripple effect. If my brush was wet, I would not be able to do this. And still I'm not done. I'm going to darken this up a little bit more, some of these shadows. I'm not finished with the water yet. Just going over this like this. Maybe a little bit more yellow, a little bit more white. I'm using the edge of my brush here and just almost parallel like these kinds of strokes like this. Okay. Just to give it like, you know, feel of grass. And you know, this grass is not gonna be a one trick pony. There's gonna be other colors involved and different techniques that's gonna be involved in doing this grass. Just glazing uh, this part too. All right. So as you can see, the, the painting's starting to shape up now. We're getting there slowly. All right, chip brush, a one inch chip brush, pure bristle. I'm gonna use that to add more visual texture to the grass. So let's see, let's use cad yellow, a little bit of crimson, give it that orange look, maybe a little bit of raw sienna, some white, dry brush it in so I'm giving some highlights mid-tone highlights to this grass let's use a little bit of crimson again some reds, you know, show some directional movements. Okay, I'm gonna use a filbert for this one. I'm gonna work on a background landscape. I'm gonna use some raw sienna, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red, good amount of white.
create some mixing. Just the edges, mixing the edges together a little bit. So basically, we ha I'm showing this hill of grass here, taller here, and all you see is a little bit of the background. Because the background really is not the focus of my painting. It's just a added bonus. Okay. And when I'm smoothing this out a little bit, it's just to give it, uh, just to soften the edges a bit and gray it down a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more uh, highlight, let me see. Sun reflecting on the prairie a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. Remember, acrylics dry, dry a little bit darker. So if you found a color that you like, you might want to go one value lighter. Don't be afraid to use your finger for effects. Using the edge of my brush here, just bam, 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 bam. We're gonna show a little bit of tree line back there. So for that, I'm gonna use a watercolor brush, which are nice and soft, and they hold a lot of water in the bristles. So I could make a nice uh, line through without losing too much paint or without streaking. So for that background. I'm going to use ultramarine blue, white, uh, maybe a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit more white. We're going to test out the color. Maybe just a little bit lighter. So now I'm just showing distant distant landscape uh, shrubs. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's test this out. There you go. That works. This bad boy's got trees here, here, here. Some highlights. Now I'm, I'm barely. I'm just skimming, skimming the, the board here. I don't have any water on this brush. No water. Just skim the tops.
you know, all with all this red here. I mean, all this green, just I'm adding a little bit of reds. So now we're going to draw. Well, I just finished drawing the bird in. Um, it's going to be an egret. So let's start working on that one. 